Hello, we're live. It's the Jack and Joe show and Fulham have a new manager on the 1st of July. Uh, Joe Sansom, who has had a wonderful pizza dinner out, which is why we're, we're on so late. We would have been uh, we would have been earlier, but um, your dad's birthday, I understand. Uh, how was your yes. dinner? Well, obviously, a wonderful way to mark the birthday is by appointing a new manager. Uh, yeah. A lovely pizza and I was running back. Uh, a little bit late, apologies, um, but I'm very excited. And we said earlier this week, we hope we'd appoint one this week. By this week, I thought we meant Sunday at best. Um, mm. I wasn't thinking it would be this quick. And I'm, I'm I'm quite amazed, actually. I mean, I know we've known Parker was going for a while, but how quickly Shahid Khan and everyone has turned it around and HMS Pista League is fully, fully ready to set sail. Come on. Um, look, we, we've got so much to talk about. Uh, yeah. We apologise if you're watching Love Island. I know it's the big craze right now, but I'm sure the Jack and Joe show is just as, if not, more important. Um, Marco Silva, a, ma a name we haven't really mentioned um, no. in our group chat on the Jack and Joe show uh, we did a few days ago. Um, so it came out yesterday, around about this time yesterday, during Love Island, Peter Rutzler uh, <laughs> creating, uh, dropping the bomb on uh, on on Twitter. So how, how do you feel? Because it, from then it seemed like it was going to happen. And, and of course, now we're sitting here 24 hours later and he is the, the manager. I've, I've got to be completely honest with my initial reaction. My initial reaction was actually quite negative. Um, mm. I saw the tweet and I thought, OK, we've just seen Duncan Castle say we're in talks. The odds were dropping on Marco Silva, and you sort of thought there must be something in it. Um, my initial reaction was, mm, I'm, I'm not too sure about this one. Um, that's partly because yesterday all the talk was about Wilder, and I've got to be honest, I think he'd have given the whole club a bit of a kick up the arse. Um, mm. You know, I just think he's that sort of guy. Um, promotions on his CV, but I've slept on it, and I've thought more about Marco Silva. And we asked for attacking football. He plays attacking football. All his teams score bucket loads of goals. He's done it in the Premier League. And I know people say he hasn't managed in the Championship. He's managed in the Premier League. Look, let's face it, managing in the Premier League is harder than the Championship, you know. Um, he's done it with Hull. Hull were unlucky to go down under him. They had a real resurgence. Watford, he was doing a fantastic job there until his head was turned. And I'm so sure we'll talk about that. Mm, yeah. um, and Everton, he had an all right first season. And it all seemed to drop off a bit. But... It's an exciting attacking appointment. I think the fact that he's turned down the Fenerbahce job makes me very excited because he's clearly got a plan. Shahid Khan said he met him and he's already done loads of research on the players, which you'd expect, but obviously it's good to hear. Um, and from the sounds of it, he was our first choice. We got him. We got it done quick. And he's missed, what, a week of pre-season training? It, a few you know, days, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saw Sheffield United only went back to start training today. So realistically, if he's back for Monday, he's missed one day. Um, yeah. They're off on the weekend, that is. I don't know. But yeah. I I'm excited. What do you think? Uh, you know what? It's It's been interesting because it's a very mixed reaction from the fans. I'm sorry, uh, Eddie Middlebrook with the $5 donation saying pizza money. Oh, wow. We really, really appreciate it. And um, thank you so much. Obviously, we don't really expect to get donations, but... Um, the generosity uh, of fans is always appreciated and we really do appreciate it. Um, it was really interesting. Marco Silva news came out basically last night and fans yeah. were like, this is crap. Um, no ambition, blah, blah, blah. And everyone, and then people were like, this is exciting. This is really good. And I was kind of, I didn't really know where to stand. And I was trying to think about, and I was thinking about his time at Everton and then Everton's fans reaction to the news. And then I tried to do a little bit more research into it and look into the whole side of things. And look, I think we were all fed up with Parkable by the end of last season. So to have a new and fresh man with ideas, um, tactics, I, I, I'm really excited at the thought that we could potentially do well next season. Obviously, he wants to manage in the Premier League and um, this is a great path towards the Premier League. We have a very good squad capable of getting top two in the Championship. And now we're in a stage where all three relegated teams have new managers with new ideas and all of them will be looking to bounce back into the Premier League. And I think we, we're standing in good stead with a, a guy in Marco Silva. Yes, he doesn't have any championship experience. Um, Ishmael does, Jukanovic does, of course. But um, he'll bring a new philosophy. He'll work with the players that we've already got. He might bring in some new men 
uh, some new players. And that's something to get excited about. I mean, um, people were fed up, like I said, with, with just this slow, mundane football we played under Parker. Bournemouth now have him. And hopefully we can go and do a job in the championship and do really well. And I'm I'm excited. Um, and of course, we have to talk about Louis Byrne Morte, who is the assistant manager of Fulham. Now, that is a real uh, morale booster for the club. Uh, and So let's touch on Louis Byrne Morte first, and then we'll come on to... Uh, a certain individual who didn't tweet anything today, which will make, <laughs> which is uh, really interesting. Um, let's get some of the questions up as well. But Joe, um, let's talk about Louis Bermorte back at Fulham. He was the assistant manager at Everton. So how are you feeling now uh, that he's going to be the number two uh, instead of Matt Wells? Um, I'm excited. Um, Matt, Matt Wells, um, you know, Let's, oh, oh, thank, thank you, Lewis. Um, but yeah, Matt, Matt Wells is a weird one because I've always sort of wondered what it is that he does. Um, because you know, you see the assistant manager, and you're you know, you're, you're not going to see them being the main person. They're not the manager. Um, Matt Wells, and I think it's really well pointed out by MJG on um, on Twitter, is that Matt Wells' main job seemed to be whispering to Scott Parker when to go seven <laughs> at the back with about 10 minutes left, and that is um, Klaxon, time to bring on the march on. Um, so I'm hoping that Louis Bermotte, obviously it's a crowd pleaser. I'm excited. I think everyone, even if you're not um, too excited for Marco Silva, uh, like many people aren't, some are, some aren't, um, I think everyone's excited for Bermotte to come back. And as soon as I realised that Marco Silva was coming, I thought, well, Bermotte was with him at Everton, um, possibly just during his second season. I'm not sure if he was with there for both. Um, but I would hope that he's going to come back, have a great reception. I'm really excited. Silver ball, Parker ball is the comment I've just seen <laughs> from Eddie. Um, thanks for that, Eddie. Um, th this comment here, by the way, Silver won't be at Motspur for two weeks with being in Portugal for isolation. Well, we, we don't know when, the, I suppose in the statement, the club statement, it did say that they met like last week, but we don't know whether he's going to take charge straight away. I've it wouldn't be like... To be honest, we don't know the rules on terms of, because their class is like elite sportsmen, um, there's ways around it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but... Is I'm Marco just Silva that, an elite sportsman? <laughs> well, um, we hope so. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure whether managers are exempt and stuff like that. This is actually... I was going to talk about this now in terms mm. of his defensive record. Um, we were good from set pieces last season defensively. Mm. I think we let in two. They were both against Arsenal. Well, um, there was one against Man City as well. One. Three. There we go, John Stones. Um, so really frustrating that the goals we did let in were poor defending. But in comparison with the rest of the league, it wasn't too bad. So, you know, his, his record is not great. I would hope the players remember what they've been taught. Um Defensively in the championship, we've got a stronger defence than we did last time round at this current moment of time. Mm. Um, that might change, you know, if Tosin and Tete, et cetera, go, which I hope they don't. Um, you would hope that the players, because one thing that Parker did sort out was the defence. I know that some of the good loanees have gone in terms of their ability, but you'd hope that the principles that they learn and Stuart Gray will have been teaching them as well, will remain. I hope Stuart Gray remains. The fact that he was still there on Monday suggests he will be. Mm. Um, we basically need to remember how to score goals and I think Silva will be able to teach them that as long as they remember everything else we should be golden mm. a good, good comment here yeah Aston Villa at home with Tyrone Mings I think that was the I second score. phase it's going to go up and up and embarrass me yeah. isn't it it's going to be loads <laughs> of goals <laughs> um, I mean there's there's so much to talk about um, Marco Silva is the new manager he was announced at about half six tonight uh, a manager who's never managed in the championship before, but he's managed Watford, Hull and Everton in the Premier League and hopefully Fulham in the Premier League maybe in a year's time. Um, a lot of people are sceptical, but the first thing that came out about the Marco Silva news was that he's keen to keep Alexandra Mitrovic. Now, that is a huge crowd pleaser because he's our main man. We haven't seen him play uh, for uh, oh, about a year and a half now. In, in real life, I suppose, unless you went to the game, they didn't even play. So um, we want to keep Mitrovic. Mitrovic's goals could be key to get us back in the Premier League. Whether well, Parker didn't fit him in the system in the Premier League, I'm sure Marco Silva said he's keen on Mitrovic, which means he's going to play a part. And look, if you, if you sit down with a new manager and you're 
and he's singing your praises saying, I, I'm keen on you, I want to play you. The Mitrovic surely will want to stay at the club. You know, he's settled in London, he's got a long-term contract. And then you look at the likes of Stefan Johansson as well, who has been linked with QPR. And then I, I'm thinking about Fabio Carvalho, you know, he's just coming under Parker and will he, will he get the chance to play in in the championship next season under Silver? So there's a lot of players who are uh, under question and whether they'll leave or go. Joe, John Michel Serry was pictured in training today. Doesn't yeah. mean much. I mean, he's back He's back for pre-season. But is there any chance that John Michel Serry is going to play a, a part in next season? You know, I'd love to say there is, but I just I just can't see it. I, I feel <laughs> like Serry's time at the club has got to be numbered now. The loan moves haven't really worked out. I don't know who would buy him, but quite simply, I don't think he's got the appetite for the championship. He hasn't wanted to play there. Last season, um, he didn't impress in the cup game at Brentford last season mm. when looking for like some sort of Premier League, um, you know, match time. Um, I, I really, I really can't see him having a future. I, th- I think the point you raise is true that, and we both said it on our video about Parker earlier this week when he left. One of the main problems with keeping Parker would have been reintegrating the players that he left out because the Loneys have gone. But he showed loyalty to Loneys, but they're not there anymore. Mm. So he's got to come back in, face the music of the players that he said weren't good enough. And from their point of view, you know, why would you want to play under him? You know, you're not going to get a chance if you get up. New manager, new ideas. Marco Silva might turn around and say, Stefan Johansson, I I think you're Premier League quality. You know, I I see you in my system. I want you in my team. Mm. You might say to Mitrovic, you're my striker. You know, different managers see different players in different ways. But one thing is for certain, Mitrovic, you're not going to get a better striker at this level at this moment in time. I don't see who we could buy that would get more guaranteed goals than him. I think he's a minimum 20 goal a season championship striker. Um, if he finishes his dinner properly, I'd say 30 goals. And we all know that he can put away <laughs> a good dinner. So I really hope that um, we keep Mitrovic. He has to be happy for us to keep him. I know he's on a massive contract. He signed a, a five-year contract in the summer of 2019. So mm. he's got three years left. But mm. Um, if a player's unhappy, you can't really keep them um, realistically. So, fingers crossed, Mitro wants to stay. And if he does, I hope he fires us straight back up. If Mitrovic leaves, I'm going to be on here in tears <laughs> saying, we cannot replace him. <laughs> like Pep <laughs> 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 um, uh, Another player to talk about is um, Anthony Knockart, yeah. who uh, posted on Instagram, I think, yesterday or today something about um can't wait to be back back pre-season blah 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 and i'm thinking well if you're going to be part of the team you're gonna to have to really step up your game because you weren't good at nottingham forest you weren't great at fulham either um but let, let's talk about marco silva some more of course he is the main focus of the video um let's talk about the formation he played at everton now I was watching a video earlier about his tactics at Everton where he had a 4-3-3, but they also played a 4-2-3-1. Mm-hmm. And he had the likes of um, Morgan Schneiderlin um, and he played the likes of Jake Tosin up front, Sig- Sigurdsson behind, Richarlison and Walcott on either side. And what he would do is he'd make Richarlison make these diagonal runs, runs to try and, and then he'd get, uh, sorry, Tosin to drop deep to try and attract defenders to, to stay with him. And then Richarlison would run in behind and that's how he would try and attack. And look, I'm not going to say, we're not going to come in and say what formation he's going to play with Fulham. But the fact that we've played 4 3 3 and a 4 2 3 1 over the last few years does bode well. And that we could probably keep to that same system. I know we dropped into a five last season. Um, it's a little early to talk about tactics and stuff, but I really want your input and your thoughts on what we might possibly see and Silver implement um, tactically for, with Fulham. Yeah, like you just said, the system at Everton, 4-3-3 or 4 2 3 one. Silver out, all right, well, fair enough. He hasn't even, he hasn't even, he's not even in the country yet, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, th- those videos are really worth a watch. There's one of his mm. time at Watford as well. Mm. Quite similar, slightly different. They were slightly more direct, I'd say, under Watford. Um, at Watford, I should say. Um, in the interview with um, Silver, he says that... Um, New chance. Um, he, he, he said that his main problem in his second season when he got sacked was they didn't replace um, Idrissa Garner Gay, who I would think the equivalent would have been um, uh, Harrison Reed at Fulham, sort of playing the deep line 
defensive cover role. Um, double pivot, as you say, and I can almost imagine Reed and Johansson playing that role. And Gisa. Um, and <laughs> he managed to beat him. Um, I wonder if he could. Um, and then you think that Kearney, if he's fit, would be playing the more advanced role where Sigurdsson played mm. at his time at Everton. Um, we've got the players that suit the way he played at Everton perfectly, to be completely honest with you, in this 4-3-3. The players have played that way since, since Slav came in a few years ago um, and continued to play that way for a lot of the, the time under Parker. So I, th- I think it's one that that's, suits both parties. The way he wants to play on the deck, attractive attacking football works for us um what we need to find is a balance because last time out it didn't work out in terms of when we stepped up to the premier league we now have a manager with premier league experience and in his season at everton they first finished eighth in his first season i mean that's Mm. not bad for everton i know they often push for top six and it's uh, very good it's very good it's very good they didn't have an amazing squad back then um, his second season went off the boil a bit, but you know that that often happens. And I do hope that Kenny Tete is bombing down the wing, um, and Robinson on the other side, who I actually think that is a bit of an interesting one. I, I want to get it confirmed, but I think Silver sold Robinson when he was at Everton. He was a youngster. Ah, oh, yes, he was at Everton. Wigan. So I am interested to see how that dynamic works out. But I, I've now slept on it. I'm excited for this appointment. I'm ready to see some attacking football. There's no better way to start than against a Neil Warnock team um, oh, yeah. <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon in, um, in yeah. August. Um, let's see how he does. Uh, I'm just going to read out uh, the statement that was put out by Sheed Khan. My commitment to Fulham Football Club is resolute and I therefore take, my, uh, take to heart my obligation to provide our supporters with the very best possible on the pitch and away from the game. In recent days, This responsibility entailed identifying, interviewing and hiring a head coach who would achieve all of our objectives as a club. Very good. Uh, uh, Oh, wow. Uh, I met Marco Silva in Portugal last week and was inspired. Marco's body of work in football was evident, but listening to him break down in detail his experiences experiences as each of his stops as a head coach was thoroughly impressive. Marco uh, also came prepared with a full understanding of the players we have and ideas on how we can move forward this season. I loved his energy and optimism, and I'm confident Marco Silva is the right choice to lead Fulham Football Club as our new head coach. Uh, that, for me, I mean, I, I, I don't know how manage, managerial interviews go, but the fact that he came prepared with a full understanding of the squad and the players, to me, I'm sure that everyone does that, but just to read that, it is nice and it's very encouraging. Uh, he's Portuguese, so will he get a tune out of Ivan Caviero, or will Parker poach Caviero uh, for himself down at Ball? Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, also, we've got uh, have we got any more Portuguese players? I was under the impression that Fabio Carvalho is is Portuguese. I, I think he is Portuguese. Yeah, I think. Is he? Uh, I might be complete. I, I think he's eligible to play for England, possibly, but um... I can't remember. I think he is Portuguese. Can anyone in the comments just confirm that? Um, or Joe is going to do some research for us quickly. Um, he's, yeah, he's born in he's born in Lisbon. Well, perfect. I mean, uh, he, he someone... represents England internationally, so that's what I was thinking of. But um, we have yeah. a we have a Bournemouth fan here saying thanks for Parker. By the way, mate, you're welcome. You're welcome, mate. We'll see have where you we yeah. say, you stay next season. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's Portuguese. Thanks to the guys on on uh, who's watching on Twitter. But how very exciting! To have a Portuguese yeah. manager who, of course, we wanted, of course, Nuno Espirito Santo. Yeah, Nuno, yeah. He's gone, he's gone to Spurs, but we've we've got an we've got a Portuguese manager in Marco Silva. Look, that excites me a lot. Marco Silva uh surely will have some um faith in Fabio Carvalho. Of course, we've got some more youngsters. We've got a lot of youngsters training with the first team at the moment because yeah. likes of Bobby and Hector are away uh with Jamaica and a few other players as well, still on their holiday break. But Joe, uh, let's talk about the lack of Tony Khan in that statement. His only mention was when uh, Marco Silva was referring to when he was speaking to Shahid and Tony. Nothing from Tony, no tweet, no nothing. There, are, We said the other day on Wednesday, there was rumours. Was it Wednesday? Yes. Oh, I can't remember. Tuesday. Tuesday was the England game, yeah. Uh, there was rumours that he was going to step away from the role. And this is a very telling... It's very telling that he's not here. He's not saying anything. Yeah, every statement normally finishes with Tony saying, 
Come on, Fulham. Come on, Fulham, exclamation mark. You know, yeah. it's, it's always the same. So this, it hasn't happened. And for a head coach or manager, whatever you can call them, you know, our head coach, but, um, you know, that's quite telling because this is a big announcement. This is the biggest of the season. Mm. And Tony Khan's not put his um, footprints on it. So it's, it's, it's very strange. Um, it does sort of signal that the rumours are true that he's been asked to step back or he has stepped back in everything but but names. Obviously, he'll still be called the director of football, etc. Um, it needs to happen, doesn't it? Let's think, we, we're all in agreement that it needs to happen for the benefit of the club. Um, he's not focused and he's not capable of completing the role as we need it. The next spot that we need to fill is the director of scouting role. Ah, yes, yeah, we're going to come on to. Well, we'd hope that that'll be filled soon because, to be completely honest, who's scouting then? <laughs> uh, we're in the transfer window. We need a director of scouting to sort of sign everything off. So I don't know who else is down at Peterborough watching Sariki Dembele, but it should yeah. be me. Uh, I'd love to go. Um, yeah. Wait, was it the rumours that Javi Pereira is taking over as director of scouting? There was a rumour about him and there was also a rumour about Steve Walsh. Oh, yes. And interestingly, actually, Steve Walsh, ex-Everton, Ah. Possibly at the same time as Marco Silva. There might have been a bit of an overlap there. I think tomorrow is going to be, before the quarterfinals kick off, of course, at five o'clock, is going to be uh, extreme research day into Marco Silva. I can't sit here and say that I'm a professional. Not, uh, well, I, I, I know I know about him in terms of he's been in and around the Premier League. I've watched the Premier League when he's been manager and stuff. But in terms of, for everyone, I think, for every Fulham fan, you'd want to do your research and understand who we're getting and what he's about. Uh, for the Chelsea fan who's commenting that Haaland's close to Chelsea for 170 million, um, we didn't ask. Uh, we'll carry on. Um, I think that uh, I think this is really exciting. I think this is something to get really excited about, Marco Silva. Um, I, I like the fact that the fans are torn because I want them to be proven wrong, and I want the fans mm. who are all for it to be like well yeah we, we thought this was going to happen uh, i'm sure there'll be more content to come there'll be a podcast i'm sure that's out uh, uh, um in due course and the likes of jack j collins he probably has the lowdown on on marco silva so you can get your real insight from him um let's talk about the squad and and, and how it's shaping up at the moment because of course no no one's left uh no one's no one's come in yet so on paper, I think we have a really good squad, Joe, and, and I want to hear like your your starting eleven for the for the Middlesbrough game just just now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as it stands now, I think we've got a squad that's easily capable of top six and should be pushing for top two without any incomings, without any outgoings. Um, I think Tosin's release clause runs out. I read in about two weeks, um, where any club can buy him for about ten million. So just oh. Stuart Gray, we saw him pictured hanging on to him. Just hang on to him for two more weeks, <laughs> please. Um, one week but, left, said yeah, David Osborne. One week left. Well, happy days. I really hope I think it was that the eighth. Yeah, eighth of July. Happy days. I thought it was fourteenth, so that's even better. Um, so my starting eleven right now would be Rodak and goal. Um, let's say four three three. Marco Silva's formation. Let's go with uh, Tete at right back, Tosin, and well, who, who's going to be fit? I mean, is Congolo going to be fit? I don't know. So uh, at this moment in time, Tosin and Con Tosin and Alfie Mawson. Oh, because okay. I've been reading the comments and it says Tosin and Congolo. Tosin and Congolo. Congolo, if he's fit, I'd play Congolo, but I don't know if he will be. Alfie um, Mawson is is back at the club. Yeah, he's an option. Alfie Mawson is not a bad defender. He's not a ball playing centre back, and I think that's something that's always been wrong. And he's not, you know, he, he's. He's, he's made of whatever Tom Kearney's knees made of, but um, <laughs> um, it's one of these things where I think he should be playing for us. I, I'm mm. being completely honest here. I know this actually quite an unpopular opinion. Uh, left back, I'd go Anthony Robinson. The three <laughs> in midfield, I'd go Mawson's Bones. They are, but let's have a game at him at least. Um, uh, and if he can stay fit, by the way, he's he's. I, I really think he's a very good defender. Mm, um, yeah. The three in midfield, Reed, Johansson and Kearney. Um, and then the three up front at the moment, I'd play Brian on the left wing. I'd play Mitrovic in the middle. Oh. And on the right-hand side, I'd possibly play Carvalho. And it's uh, currently there's no real wingers there, but I think there's enough in that team. Um, 
Uh, we've got so many options, Jack. It's so hard yeah, to because choose. Even if you play Caviero and Brian on either side of which you're suggesting, yeah. we've got the likes of Caviero knockouts come off the bench yeah. and like Jasper and, and, and players like that. Well, and Bobby, Bobby Reed. Bobby and, Reed. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Reed <laughs> and Hector are both on uh, gold cup duty, which is why I haven't included either of them. Yes. Uh, but they'll be back. The final, I'm not so sure, but... Um, if they, if they don't get through the group, they're back on the 24th of July. The 21st yeah. of July is when it finished. They'll probably be back by the 23rd, 24th. Yeah. Um, if they win the whole thing, I think they're back just before the season starts. So I wouldn't expect them to start. But in terms of match fitness, that'd be great. Um, yeah, yeah. And of course... Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people are upset because we haven't said Bobby D called over Reed, but there he is. Uh, someone's put here: Rodak Tete, to Tosin Reem, Robinson, Reed Johansson, Carvalho at Cam, Brian Micho Cav. You know, th there's a lot there's of things. options. I love the fact you said Reed Johansson Kearney because that's almost like the 17, 18 midfield apart from Kevin McDonald, and yeah. of course a player like Harrison Reed protecting the back four. Yeah, it is super cool. Super cool, uh, super bock is the great <laughs> Portuguese bock. beer. Uh, are you guys super bock or sagres when it comes to your Portuguese beers? I, I'd like to know, yeah. Uh, a, but yeah, a big I, question, yeah. And of course, like uh, we mentioned earlier, we've still got the likes of Anguisa and Seri, and who's others? Who's Onomar? Josh Onomar's obviously oh, yeah, still Onomar. here, yeah. There's uh, Ollie with the Onomar comment. Um, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> a Fulham player loses a knee ligament every time Jack Bruce pronounces. But like, it's not a mispronunciation. I'm going off the EFL commentator Gary Weaver. <laughs> Super bock for me. <laughs> Super bock for sure. Sargres. I mean, Sargres. Uh, you see, I possibly agree with Sargres. I'm being C1. Yeah. I yeah. um I was in Portugal a couple of years ago. The 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 summer just before our our last championship season. I was yeah. in. And I think it was super, it was Sagres for me. I was, I was, yeah, because we got like a box of each, and then yeah. uh, I was just jumping, jumping <laughs> at the bit when it came to the Sagres. Let's talk more about our new manager, Marco Silva. Um, yeah. What more would you like to say? Um, what more do you think is there to say? Uh, and I just want to know where you, where's your head at when it comes to. Is he going to take a straight back up? Is it going to be a slow burner? Is he going to come in and he hit the ground running? Uh, because I'll tell you what, some favourable fixtures. We can talk about the fixtures in a, in a few minutes' time because we haven't really covered it. Um, so, so I just want to hear your thoughts, basically. Yeah, I mean, the fixtures on paper look great. And at Hull, Watford and Everton, he had very good start to each. So you'd think that quick start is, is on the cards. We just need to hope that it doesn't slowly burn out at all. Um, I'm not... I'm not too sure what I expect, but I, I feel like this isn't a, um, I feel like this isn't a um, long-term appointment. I feel like this is a very short-term. Really? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I'm not sure if everyone agrees. Sorry, I can see Godzilla up there. Happy days. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, I think it's an appointment where it's quite um, short-term in terms of let's get back up straight away. Here's a manager that can do that. Um, and he's he's never stayed anywhere long, and that's possibly why I say that. He's never managed to hold down a job, and maybe he's looking at us as a project where he can stay for a mm. few years uh, and really push on, but I'm, I'm really excited. Um, my head's in a good place in terms of I'm expecting to see attacking football. I'm expecting to see goals. I'm expecting to see lots of action, um, and I just... I can't wait to get going. I, I'm excited to see when he has his first press conference, what his ideas mm. are. Um, mm. I would hope that he'll bring through the youth. We've got a comment up at the moment about Apoku, who a lot of people are tipping to sort of break into that, break into that team, break into the first team. Um, and I just really, I can't wait to get going. It's one of these things where there's all the negativity about Parker's gone and, you know, mm. what that means for us as a club. Obviously, it's not great news that Parker's gone. Um, in terms of he sidestepped to, to another club in the same league. It, it, it's not ideal. It's not good PR. Mm. It doesn't speak good volumes of the club. Mm. We've got someone quite impressive in my eyes has chosen to play, for, uh, has chosen to be our manager. Mm. Um, he's, you know, he's a, he's a Premier League proven manager and I, I can't wait to get going. Uh, 200, over 200 of you are watching here across Twitter and uh, YouTube, which is absolutely phenomenal given it's... Uh, it's quarter past ten at night. Uh, we're we're really really pleased uh, and yeah. and delighted with the support. 
my head has completely been turned here because while you were talking, I was just having a little glance at the comments. We haven't even mentioned the likes of Tyrese Francois, Steven yeah. Sessignon, Abubakar Kamara, Niskins Cabano. I mean, these are extraordinary. I honestly think we could name an 11 right now of players we, name, we haven't mentioned. Yeah, we could name two 11. George yeah. Wickens, who, of course, might have a breakthrough season. Jay Stansfield, I saw someone to comment about. I mean, uh, Lamar. We, we've got a massive squad. This is one big issue, actually. We've got a massive squad. We've got four capable right-backs, if you include Fossey and Stephen Sessignon, as we've got Christy and Tete. Um, and we've got, I mean, Adoy could play there. I mean, I don't expect Adoy, to see Adoy. I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. That is what, his first job has probably been got to be to cut down the squad to include the players that he wants mm. um, and the players that he will use. Because currently we've got from we've got players from Slav season, we've got players from Parker, um, and we've got a few players that have just come and never quite made it work. For example, Knockhart and the Marchand, they've just never quite had that mm. breakthrough. Um, so it's a really interesting mix of players, and I hope that he can find his. It, the depth is ridiculous. I mean, the, the third 11 that we could name, the third choice 11, I think would probably finish top half in the championship. I really do. You um, know, I hate I hate I mean, to do it's... the thing where, because obviously we've come down from the I hate to just be like arrogant. I remember on the last video I said, um, like, we, we, we should get top two and stuff. Like, I know the harsh realities, you know, if you don't hit the ground running and you're playing yeah. catch up. We saw that against Barnsley in the opening day. Uh, last time out, I was absolutely fuming when we lost. Um, uh, we have to say that on paper, we're really excited about the squad. We're really excited about what uh, we could even we could bring in no players in the summer, and I'd still be really like excited about the team, about the squad. But you have to have a dose of realism. Well, thing, we, we both res we both respect the league, but it's just the mm. fact that the players we've got on paper are good enough. It's just whether we can find a system that works and whether they mm. perform how they're meant to. You, you could tell we have very much enthusiasm in our voices. We're excited about the season. Of course, not going to games last season. We we're in lockdown and now it looks like we're going to be back. So there, there's double the excitement. Uh, and of course, we, we, want, we want to see like a, a, a championship winning season. I, I'm not saying that as if like oh, we're going to do it. I know we're at the shortest in terms of the prices of when it comes to betting, but it would be great to literally Jack Ralph saying right now, HMS piss the league. We said it last time. It didn't quite yeah. work out the way, but we've got this new manager. who has got new ideas. He can play attacking football, which we haven't seen at the cottage for, for some time. Look, we scored nine goals at home last season. Of course it was in front of zero fans, but still um, you, you'd, you'd like to think we're going to score more than that in, in a 46 or 23 home game campaign. Um, let's go on to the fixtures. Middlesbrough, yeah. Huddersfield, Millwall, Hull, Stoke Hull, Stoke Hull. That's the first five before the international break. I, I genuinely could see us picking up a lot of points there. Well, you don't look at any of those teams and, for example, none of them are the favourites for top six at the start of the season. The thing with the championships, you never know. You know, mm. Middlesbrough could be dark horses. Um, any of them could because the gaps aren't that big in terms of who can get top six and who's just going to be mid-table. It's just fine margins in the championship. Um, I'm really glad we don't play any of the big hitters at first. I know that Bournemouth play West Brom first, and I don't envy that. That's, because that's a tough night, game. It? It's a tough game, yeah, for both teams. It's a tough game for both teams. Um, I hope Stuart Gray stays on, but I don't know. Mm. Um, I feel you, like we need an experience. So. You, you'd, you'd hope so. He's been there for a long time now. Um, and, I'd, you know, he was he, he's had... The promotion of last time he knows what it takes um and the players know him it's someone that they can that they've, they've played with under for a few years and i want us to hit the ground running and really get some points in these opening few games because we normally start quite slowly whatever league we're in mm. um we need to kick on uh reminders that the game against middlesbrough has been moved to the sunday at half one which is a bit annoying uh, and the game against yeah. Mill was live on Sky Sports as well. The EFL Cup will be will be in round two, so that will be I think like mid late August time. Uh, yeah. I'm a little bit gutted because I have a very proud record of going to every Fulham game, and I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to Huddersfield away because I have a family thing here, and it's all very upsetting for myself. But uh, <laughs> I have got to get over it because uh, uh, I know Jack Stroudley is probably watching, or hopefully still watching. 
booked his train today and I felt a little bit sad about it. But I might convince my dad just to, to hop out of it. But uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I'm going to ask you a question now, Joe, about... Good I'm going to... I know it's early days and we'll probably do this. Uh, we'll do this the week before the season starts. But I want the top six now. Just top six now. I, oh, I want your top, I want your top oh, six dude. now. Just be, just be, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, oh, of course, we got Sheffield United last day of the season. Oh man! Um, so I've got to be honest. At this moment in time, I think West Brom win it. Oh, um, uh, Valerian Ishmael. Yeah. Well, it's not just even him. It's just that. The squad, I think they'll lose Johnston. I think they'll lose Pereira, but I don't think they'll lose many others. They're signing Mowat, um, Alex Mowat. Um, yeah, Alex Mowat, yeah. I, I, think, I think they've got just the makings of a good team. I think it's quite similar to the one that went up last time. And I don't know, West Brom, they just they, they normally seem to do all right. So I, I, I'm going to go for West Brom right now. It might change. I'm going to go for the mighty Fulham in second because oh, we, <laughs> we, 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 we have to give it a go. Um, and I'm going to be a bit boring. I'm going Sheffield United third and it's literally the relegated three, top three. Mm. But with Jukanovic, it sometimes takes him a little while to get his systems into place, but I don't think you can look past him. I think they'll get top six. The rest of the top six is a little bit harder. I am going to go... Oh, it is really tough, isn't it? Mm. I mean, it's really tough. I it's am really going to tough. go... I don't know the order. I'm going to go Swansea. I'm going to go Bournemouth. Okay. And the last one, I don't know. I thought Reading until I saw they had a transfer embargo. Mm. Um, Cardiff. Right. Okay. Cardiff. Interesting. Uh, I wrote down a preliminary one on the 31st of May, so over a month <laughs> ago. Um, but obviously, it's just to have it, and then I'm just going to change it around. And, and obviously, things have happened. So I'm going to go West Brom. Or... I'm going to probably echo you and say that West Brom win it. But of course, this can all change. Yeah. And like in a month's time, I could be like, look, Fulham are going to win this. And uh, but, but you never know. West Brom, I'm going to echo you and say Fulham to get second just because you've yep. got to back your own team. Yep. Then I'm at a standstill. You know what? I'm actually going to put my neck out on the line. It's all going to change, of course, in a month's time. But from the way I look at it now, I'm going Cardiff in third, Swansea in fourth under Steve Cooper. Of course, he's not sure. going to go to Fulham. I'm then going to do a real interesting one i'm gonna go fifth sheffield united fine and sixth and you're gonna hate me for this queens park i knew you were gonna Rangers. say it, yeah. I knew and i think bournemouth will finish just outside the playoffs and that's that's nothing to do with my, uh, the... <laughs> i wonder why you can't sideways your way into it twice. I mean, mate. you've got the likes of Middlesbrough, Forest, uh, Reading, who, of course, could do well. Birmingham are on their up. I mean, we, we talked about it in SW6 Essential a few weeks ago about how many teams could turn it around. You never know what Stoke are going to do these days. Oh, this league's bonkers. This it's going to be bonkers. great. It's going to be great. But look, we, we really shouldn't have gone into that. But but I had to just get your thoughts. Yeah. Um, well, has anyone got any questions they'd like to ask? Maybe we'll go through some of the comments. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about England as well before we go. All right, let's have a look at some people. It's Fulham, Sheffield United, West Brom, Bournemouth, Swansea. That's seven teams. <laughs> That's the top seven. Top so seven. You're saying that Forrest are finishing at seventh place. I'm hoping to see the 16, 17 Kearney higher up the pitch, allowing for Harrison and Steph to control completely. I mean, Tom yeah. Kearney, uh, obviously he hasn't played much football, but it'd be great to see him play a little bit higher up. Uh and yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see what he can bring. A Wolves fan saying West Brom is more like a relegation battle this season championship. Uh, I think under Ishmael, they'll be okay. I think that's just your Wolves head speaking there. All right, okay, okay. Hit one from uh, Will Bateman, who I was talking to earlier, uh, and he made some lovely comments. Oh, I'm sorry, I've, I've lost the comment. Here we go. One player you want to sign. Ooh, okay. 
So I feel like where we really need some improvement is on the wings. Um, and I know I'm tempted to say, but I'm... Uh, I'm <laughs> oh, Sariki Dembele. I, I really like him. I, I remember once we were linked, I watched loads of Peterborough highlights and he was looking so dangerous. Um, the fact that we were linked, the fact that I don't think it would cost too much money makes me very interested in him. The problem is we were linked with Sarika Nebele, but now a new manager's come in. I've kind of like wiped the slate clean in terms of the people yeah. we were interested in. I mean, even yeah. Harry Wilson, who's been linked a couple of times in the last week, um, does Marco Silva rate him? Does Marco Silva have players in mind he wants to bring in? Are we going to bring in players that we have never heard of before, but um, some like rogue Portuguese players, which of course I would love because there's nothing better than signing players who you haven't heard of before, but do fantastically well. And, and you look at likes of Brentford, I hate to say it, but their model, it works. It got them up in the yeah. end. Um, hopefully this time next year, we're, we're swapping places and Frank is out of a job. But um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what everyone's saying. Um, look at this. It's funny. Can't wait for Silver to play Kearney up top, <laughs> up front with Kamara, Ranieri style. I, I think I mean, if there was a 4-4-2 with Kearney and Kamara up front, <laughs> I, I would be lost for words. I think that is one of the stupidest front twos you've ever seen. <laughs> Sorry, I missed this from Harry Hall because I really want to answer this question. How do you see Huddersfield Town doing? I'm not sure if you're a Huddersfield fan. I see them going down. I'm sorry. I quite rate that. The, I <laughs> quite rate uh, uh, Peterborough, Blackpool and um, Hull City. I actually back them all to stay up. I... <laughs> Huddersfield oh, like, had a I'm ready to hear it on the 14th of August, honestly. Am I, am I right in saying, Harry, that um, Carlos Corberan is still the manager of Huddersfield Town? They, were, they had a close true. shave last season and they came in and, they th and I thought they would do quite well under him because obviously he worked for Bielsa. Uh, we've gone off on a tangent completely. By the way, sorry, Huddersfield, just really quickly, they have signed so many players already. Oh, they have, yes. It's unbelievable. Um, I mean, they're not messing about. I think they've signed about five or six free agents. Yeah, he's still here, Carlos Carbaran. Um, I've seen a lot of these sort of comments saying Cav will be the new Rich Allison and Fabio will be the new Rich Allison and stuff like that. I'm all for it. Oh, this yeah. is a good shout. Lucas Yao. Of course, he's at, he's at Reading. And I'm sure Reading will want to keep hold of him, hold of him given they've got an embargo. Uh, this is kind of like a getting into it. We'll get back to the, the, the Marco Silva stuff. Yeah. After this question, would you take Corley Woodrow back as Mitchell back up or replace with Ifila? That's actually one position we kind of do need to uh, get, and that's a striker, nice, yeah. Yeah. a backup striker if Mitch is going to stay. Um, I actually, before we get back to Marcus Silva, I'll ask you one more question. Yeah. Derby County, they're in limbo at the moment. We don't know what's happening. It could be we're playing Wickham um, this season. Oh, look, literally right on cue. What do you think of Derby yeah. County? Do you think they get deducted points? So, Joe, I want to hear your thoughts. Um, my granddad supports Derby. Um, oh, yes. So I, <laughs> that doesn't mean I particularly like them, but I do, uh, I don't wish anything bad on them. And I hope they don't, even though, just, just for his sake. But I, I also don't think they will. I feel like they'll bottle it. I really do. I feel like it's too close to the start of the season. I feel like it was going to happen. Yeah, it all happened already. If it does happen, it's a new can of worms for English football, I think, because... I think that it will, you know, our other teams will get punished for similar things. And I think Derby probably deserve one. Um, and Wickham, in turn, deserve to stay up. Um, I don't think it will happen now. I, I don't. Um, but Derby are in big trouble, even without one, because they've got barely any contracted players. They've got a bit of a Crystal Palace situation going on, where Crystal Palace do not have any, um, I think they've got about players. 11 first-team yeah. players. So they can field an 11, but that might include two goalkeepers, for example. So, um, so it's a weird one. Yeah, my pal, my brother is a Palace fan, and he's very concerned. I mean, Patrick Vieira comes in; they've still got those players all out of contract, which I think expired today, isn't it? It's the first of July today. Yeah. Uh, so all change at Crystal Palace. Uh, we'll keep an eye on them this season. Uh, someone said Ovi Ajaria. I mean, the problem is, I think we're so congested now in midfield uh, with the options we've got that I think the main positions we need to target. Is probably a backup striker. I wouldn't be surprised if we bring in less than five players in this summer. Yeah, I don't think well, we there's need. A few, there's a few bodies we need. I think in midfield, in terms of, I think we could do with another goal-scoring midfielder. In fairness, and I think we need a backup for Reed. 
Um, mm. But other than that, I don't think there's any need for another midfielder. I mean, we've got how many have we got that are okay at the moment? I mean, I'd say five. Um, mm. Get get one more in, possibly even just mm. one more. Uh, okay, Marco Silva is the new Fulham boss. I just I want to know whether if something happens where he gets us promoted. In fact, let's not say that. Let's say he's doing a really good job at Fulham. Uh, and let's say a team who's in the Europa League last 32 come in. I know he turned down Fenerbahce today. But let's say they come in and they go, we really like what you're doing at Fulham. And we think we can win the Europa League and do well in our domestic league. Because of his record that he had this whole saga where his head turned and he went to Everton from Watford. Do you think a similar thing could happen? Or like you said earlier, do you think this is going to be a long-term project? that he sees because you didn't personally see it as a long term. Yeah, I, I don't think he would. And that's because I saw an interview with him where he basically um, explained that he made a bit of a mistake with how he handled things and mm. regretted it and cost himself his um, reputation in England. Even now, the part of the re negative reaction from fans is due to his reputation of being a guy that comes in for a few months. A snake, yeah. Yeah, a snake, exactly. I mean, I know Watford fans hate him. And to be fair, I understand why. Um you know, he, he he jumped ship when they were doing well and he didn't do himself any good and it probably cost Watford as well long term. Um, I, I can't see him doing it, but one thing that I like to think is that if we ever get to a position where another club is going to poach him, it means we're in a good enough position for them to want to poach him. It means we're most likely winning the league, most likely top two, and that's all we can ask for. So, Let's get to that position first, then worry about it. But I would hope he wouldn't make the same mistake again. Uh, am I right in saying, Gab, is this Gab Sutton who followed me on Twitter while we were live just a few, about 25 minutes ago? Uh, because if so, um, that's for me, that's that's really made me smile because um, I've heard a lot about, you know, uh, I listen to you on podcasts and stuff. Um, there's a, hopefully I've got it right. Uh, because he's commented here saying, I've seen a bit of a poku in the lower leagues. He's brilliant. He played at Plymouth, of course, last season. Can fly forward as an attacking left back, but defensively aware too. Now, a poku, I didn't know whether the, the, the ship had sailed for him at Fulham. And of course, we've got v loads of options at fullback now. Potentially at left back, there's a, there is an opportunity for him, maybe, depending on what happens with Robinson um, and Brian. Of course, you say you want to play Brian out on the left wing. Uh, but but what do you think of Apoku's chances of maybe playing like in the early 23s and maybe getting his chance in the cup and then we see where he goes from there? I think it's got to be one of those where he gets some game time in the cup uh, and the starting 11 um, and then possibly you put him on the bench as a backup. I mean, there's no point hanging on now to players that are the wrong side of 30 when you've got youngsters who are chomping at the bit ready. And Apoku's not the youngest. I can't remember his age, but I don't think he's really young. I, I think he's like 22, 23. Yeah. Um, so he's been around for a while. He did well at Plymouth um, and their fans seem to really like him. I assume this is what uh, Gable's referring to was he played for them last season. Um, and it's one of these things. We can only hang on to these youth players for so long. Um, he needs to play football. So if he's not going to get a chance this season, then I think we need to loan him out to another championship club not lower than that. Yes. Um, I yeah. think he needs the game time because, you know, he's not 18 years old with a few years to spare. He needs to be playing regular first team football. He's a massive centre back. He can play left back, as you say. Um, seems to be either. Um, you know, we've got gaps at left centre half if need be. You know, if Congola and Mawson have injury problems, Reem's getting on a bit. Um, if he's naturally left sided, then he might have a chance. And I'd I'd really like to see some youngsters come through, but I also understand that we can't bring too many through if it um, if it slightly derails the plans of getting top two because too many youngsters too soon is a bit McGaff. <laughs> mm. um, and we don't want that, even if it has the right intentions. Uh, Gab or Gabriel Sutton, um, I think it is you because uh, you followed me on Twitter earlier and, of course, you put the comment... Um, of course, you present the EFL fan show. We would love to get you on. If you're still watching, we'd love to get you on pre-season, have a little chat with you about all things championship, all things Fulham, uh, because we're really looking to get some guests on during pre-season uh, uh, and throughout the season to really make this show our own and, and to really expand the content and, and, and 
go ham this season, really. Uh, uh, there's another comment that's really caught my eye that came in earlier. Harry Hall again, Huddersfield fan, we don't know. What does Marco Silva offer that Parker doesn't? And that's a really interesting question, to be fair. Of course, what is Portuguese for? We live in a world for. Or we live in a world. <laughs> we live in a world where. Um, I'd love um, to know that. Uh, oh. But Joe, answer that question. What does Marco Silva offer that Parker doesn't? Um, successful Premier League experience um, and an attacking philosophy are the two things that stick out to me. And we don't know how it's going to go. He might fail miserably. He might be the best manager we've ever had. We've just got to get behind him and see. But those two things for me are important. Whatever the success was going to be, they had to play exciting football and they had to have some sort of experience of either getting a team up or keeping a team up. And he kept Everton up. He would have kept Watford up. And he gave it a good shot with a whole team that wasn't great. I think they had about two or three wins before he came in. Mm. And they ended up about four, five points off safety. So um, he got it closer than Parker did. Let's put it that way. Um, and I'm willing to give him a go. And I really just hope that he brings some excitement back to Craven Cottage and some optimism because it's been a bit negative recently. Uh, Marco Silva's last game for Everton, which was his last job in the Premier League, was the 5-2 defeat to Liverpool in the Premier League. That was the game that was on Amazon Prime. I think it was... Was it the same season? It was the same season that it was COVID because it must have been the first part of the season before lockdown. Everton got an absolute hammering. And then I th I, I believe they brought in Ancelotti off that after the whole uh, Duncan yeah. Ferguson era as well for a couple of weeks. So he's, he was very recently in the Premier League, uh, literally the season before last. Um, I think Marco Silva is going to bring more attacking football, more risks. When he, somewhat, I remember seeing a comment earlier from Everton fans saying, if you uh, get used to Marco Silva bringing on six attackers or something uh, during the game, well, great. I mean, we, we want goals. and uh, Maybe he's got that same um, Slavisa philosophy where, look, you score two, but we'll score three sort yeah. of thing. Hopefully we're very we are more cautious in terms of defensively because you don't want to be shipping loads of goals in the championship because you know people will say, Yes, you're scoring loads, yes, you're getting wins, you're getting points, but if you're conceding some, that's gonna catch up on you and that's gonna cost you points. Um th there's plenty of examples of that from last season, the season before. Uh yeah, so Silver left in late 2019. Uh tomorrow I'm gonna really have to do my research. Uh Fulham as a fan. Okay, very funny. Uh, what about our academy players? Okay, so, of course, because Parker brought in a few youngsters at the back end of the last season, I would hate to think that that hinders their chances of getting into the first team because there's a new manager. Um, I'd hate to think that Parker would like to poach the likes of Carvalho to Bournemouth. Hopefully not. Um, so so give me your thoughts on the likes of like Francois, Cav, uh, Carvalho and uh, like Jasper. Yeah, th th those three were three organizations going to say should have some game time you'd think that Wickens would end up being the backup goalkeeper probably plays in cup games Apoku should get some game time as well there's also all the uh, under 18s players that have just been fabulous um, you've got Bauer, Bierith, uh, Stansfield, Tiehi, so many players that are just very good quality and I think the ones that will start to break through will be Jasper, Carvalho, Francois, I feel like that's the group that Parker started it already and it'll be up to Silva to finish it off. I don't know how much they'll get played. I feel like Carvalho will get the most game time and probably deservedly so. Mm. Um, I think the gaps in our team uh, benefit him and Jasper the most. So I would really hope that we'll see a lot of game time from them because, you know, we've got this amazing academy and we haven't used it that much. Um, Sessegnon and Fossey are both right back options. So if Tete stays, I think that's great and he should be our first choice. But, you know, you play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Play Stevie Sess in one of the games. Play Fossey in one of the games. You know, we've got a big squad. We should use it. Um, and, you know, I th I'd, I'd, rather, I'd much rather see the youth players play than some of the Deadwood that is coming back in. It's harsh to call them Deadwood, but you know that they're not going to be around for much longer. I include players like Christy, Lamar Chund in that. Um, Kamara even as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see him staying around for much longer, possibly even getting sold if the rumours are true. So mm. um, I think those two in particular should be getting significant game time this season. Mm. I'll tell you what, uh, it's uh, it's been really fun on the stream tonight. We'd be remiss if we didn't spend the last five or so minutes talking about England. 
Yeah. Uh, because look, it's relevant news. We're football fans. We're also England fans. We're Fulham fans. We're also England fans. Um, what do you think about the tournament so far? I think it's been a wonderful tournament. Sorry, the point I was going to make just before um, England is the fact that I, th- I think I'm right in saying there's five subs next season. So well, it does, possibly, yeah. it does look bigger like you're going to have a bigger squad, yeah. Uh, but England, of course, are into a world, not World Cup, European Championships quarter final against the Ukraine, yeah. which uh, is, I mean, if someone had told me you'd be in a quarter final against Ukraine, I'd be quite excited at the fact that we might have a path to the final. And it looks like we've got a really good path to the final. Uh, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I know Ukraine's in a potential banana skin, but let's just talk about that Germany game the other day on Tuesday. What a wonderful occasion that was. Well, Jack, I mean, you were there and I'm very jealous. It must have been just unbelievable. You sent me a picture of your view. I mean, mm. for both goals, when it the ball was played across the box, you must have just been in dreamland. And um, it seemed like such a release of emotion and it was such a good performance. I mean, the first half was a bit slow at mm. times and I thought defensively, we've just become so solid. You know, Muller had that chance from the Sterling mistake. But other than that, um, we were solid the whole game. And it for the first time in um, a game against a top side, I'd say in my lifetime, I really thought we were going to be the one to get the late goal. And we did, mm. uh, two of them, in fact. Um, every other game that I've ever watched against a half-decent side for England in my lifetime, I've always expected them to nick it late on if it's level or even if we're 1-0 up or something like that. I've never expected much. And I feel like the whole country is starting to believe that we've got, a special group of players that are likeable off the pitch as well. And we won't get a better chance of winning the Euros in this. I mean, mm. the hardest teams are on the other side of the draw. And I know that Denmark, Czech Republic and Ukraine, who will play next, are all good sides. But we just have to get past two of them to be in a final. And that is motivation enough. Mm. We haven't conceded in four games. In the four games we played, we've looked very, very solid. The two in... Front of the back four, Rice and Phillips have been impeccable. Uh, I think that uh, I think it's been a, a really good showcase as to you know what what happens with England. You know what comes of England. You've got the media pressure, the fan pressure, the nation's pressure, and Southgate is the most stubborn man when it comes to that sort of stuff, which I absolutely love about him. Doesn't bow down to the pressure. He says, "Look, we're going to play the two holding midfielders when everyone's saying play the one." Uh, we're going to we're going to play. We're going to bench the likes of Foden and Grealish. We're going to play Saka, and and, and we're going to keep on playing Raheem Sterling. And Kane will get his chance, and we keep playing him. He'll get his goal, and he did. And it's working to a T. Defensively, we're fantastic. Maguire comes into the second game. Mings great first game, fantastic. Maguire comes in. We look so solid, uh, and I generally feel like we have the goals. Of course, going forward, we've got the talent. But if we can keep out Ukraine. I think it's capable. We're capable of doing that, and I think we'll be in a. I think we'll be in the semi-final if we, if we, if we just are disciplined in our performance and don't make any silly mistakes. It's the first game we're playing away from Wembley, obviously in Rome, which is going to be difficult. But I think uh, I think we've got all the chances of getting to um, a European final, and I'm really excited, Joe. Um, I hate to end the video and the live streaks we've really enjoyed ourselves on, on a somber note but um i was i was uh i i i'm i apologize profusely i forgot to mention in the last video um we're really sad to hear the news of tony fisher and of course it was about a week and a half ago he passed away um we mentioned it a, a few weeks ago that he was ill in hospital and of course it's um it's very, very sad, and we're going to miss him a lot. And look, um, I think the whole Fulham family knows how much he loved the club and how much he uh, he cared for Fulham. He was at every game, home and away, Riverside stand with his with his flag. Um, I'm absolutely gutted, um, and I, my, my thoughts with his friends and family. And of course, um, every home game. He's going to be missed every away game. He's going to be missed. Joe, I'd like to just end by tributing the super fan that is Tony Fisher. And um, we're, we're really going to miss him. And he's such a, a big loss. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just going to miss him a lot. And I'm sure everyone else will, Joe. 
I think Joe might have frozen. Um, so I, he's just coming back now. Um, he's just regaining uh, his connection. But yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe the news when I saw it. It was very, very upsetting. And I'm sure the Fulham fans um, will give a lovely tribute. I hope the, the club do something. Uh, sorry, we've lost Joe to a connection. Hopefully he comes back. Um, uh, I hope the club do something in commemorating um, him um, at the first home game um, against Middlesbrough. Um, Joe is just back with us now. Sorry, Joe, that is um, horrendous timing. No, um, of course, but it, it happens. Uh, of course, we could go for an hour anyway. So yeah. I just wanted to, to, see, to ask you. Yeah, um, I, I actually started talking. I didn't realise I cut off, but... Um, yeah, I I can't remember going to a, a Fulham game and not seeing Tony. Um, every home game I'd see him, as you say, in the Riverside stand. I used to sit in the Johnny Haynes with you and we'd sit almost across from there, be able to see. And every away game is such a happy face. And I was so shocked when I saw the news because obviously we knew he was in intensive care. But I I almost just thought he thought, thought he would pull through. And I, 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 was, I was heartbroken to hear the news. And obviously our thoughts go out to his family and his friends um and i was just so sad to hear the news so um i'll really miss seeing him at games um he was such a character and he loved the club so much and i'm so happy that um one thing that did happen is that he got to be the the main fan at wembley in 2018 and he walked out with the trophy at the start of the game and he was it was his moment and he would have had such a wonderful day and that makes me very happy knowing that he had that moment Tony, uh, I'll miss chatting to you on the train in the concourse outside the ground um, and you'll be missed and you'll be forever in the Fulham fans' hearts. And I, like I said, just before you, um, you came back, I hope the fans, uh, the, cl the club do something for the opening game. Yeah. Uh, a minute's applause, a minute's silence. Um, it's been really nice to sit here and, and talk to you for an hour and have some fantastic company. We've kept a 200 people up for the whole stream basically it's kind of dropped down now as everyone seems so we are wrapping up but um we're really grateful and we're really excited about this season and i hope that we can do it uh for tony and have a wonderful season he will forever be in our thoughts and joe um thanks very much for joining me today yeah thanks a lot jack and thanks to everyone for sticking with us for an hour yeah i know it's late i know that people have work tomorrow and, and things to do uh, there'll be a lot more content to come from us, hopefully in the coming weeks. Um, depending on how England are doing, I'm, I'm sure we'll probably work around that. Uh, and then, of course, when, when we inevitably lose in the final or the semi-final, we'll, uh, we'll dry our, our eyes and get back on the Fulham horse. And look, we're excited with the new manager, uh, excited with where this can bring us. And I'm sure uh, all the Fulham fans can read a little bit about our manager and, and, and get have their own thoughts and feelings but for now joe thank you very much thanks a lot thanks a lot guys yeah i was hoping you'd say thanks a lot so we didn't have that awkward five second pause again <laughs> uh, but this, this is it now um thanks everyone for your comments i'm sorry we couldn't get to all of them uh but i'm sure in the coming weeks we'll uh, get some we'll, we'll just yeah have more discussions and hopefully see some new faces through the door uh, whether that's in terms of playing staff and uh and just coaching staff but yeah let's end it here um thanks very much for watching and uh yeah come on for them <laughs>